This is the wood of the cross, upon which hung the Saviour of the world. Come, let us worship. At the Good Friday Liturgy, it is, in a normal year, profoundly moving to be alongside others, as, one by one, we respond to these solemn words of proclamation by going up to the cross to offer a sign of reverence. Young and old, male and female, healthy and infirm, the confident, the uncertain, the joyful, the sorrowful. All bless the cross with a kiss, a gentle touch, a reverent bow, a moment of encounter upon bended knee. Each gesture shimmers with a personal intimacy, a universal significance, a poignant sense of beauty. It is the beauty of a simple act of devotion, responding to the strange, alluring beauty of the cross. When this takes place during the service at All Saints, deep calls out to deep, as beauty takes wing and reverberates amid the neo-Gothic splendour, the high columns, the stained glass windows, the sandstoned walls, saturated by prayer and sea air, while the choir expands space and souls with song. All these lines of perspective, harmony and reverence converge on the crucifix at the centre of the Reredos, the lodestar of the church's fabric and purpose, as it is lit up by the afternoon sun. But how can we say the cross is beautiful? The ubiquity of crosses and crucifixes can dull us to its dissonant horror. How can this image of suffering, torture and abandonment evoke from us a response of wonder and adoration that are the hallmarks of an encounter with what is beautiful? Indeed, if upon the cross and in the broken body of Jesus we encounter the truth about God's salvation of the world, then the cross seems to question the very notion of beauty itself. It shatters with terrifying realism the modern notion that beauty is simply about subjective taste. It also seems to clash with the ancient understanding of beauty as an encounter with the real that gives delight through the perception of a thing's outward sense of proportion, form and radiance. Rather, in Christ crucified, the words of the prophet Isaiah ring out with haunting power. He had no beauty, no majesty to draw our eyes, no grace to make us delight in him. His form disfigured, lost all the likeness of a man. His beauty changed beyond human semblance. But what of the fact that beauty lies at the heart of the Christian conviction about the goodness and truth of God and God's creation? The Psalms declare the beauty of holiness and the glory of creation. The startling array of living things, the oceans and mountains, the stars and the sky, the sun and moon, all shimmer with a distinctive and mysterious beauty, one that sings out the beauty of God. And what of the beauty of human art and music, of story and craft, the face of one whom we love, an act of kindness, a word of truth? Are all these cast aside by the cross? No. Instead, what is shown on the cross takes us deeper into that ancient notion of beauty as the appearance of what something truly is. A telling out of each being's innermost depth in which shines the radiant mystery of being itself as God's beautiful gift. For on the cross, in the fullness of Jesus's humanity and in the gift of himself, are manifested the reality of God's life in a world scarred by violence and suffering. The cross declares the beauty of divine love made flesh within a world that has lost touch with its own heart of beauty and often prefer prefers cruelty. This terrible manifestation of divine beauty of God crucified, brings judgment to all shallow notions of beauty. 
upon the cross, God's love exposes the patterns of self-destruction that have become enmeshed within our societies and hearts. Yet judgment is not the last word. For on the cross, the very truth of beauty itself is revealed. The face of beauty is presented to us in God's act of self-giving devotion towards us, made bare in Christ. This does not just take place in an isolated moment of terror and condemnation, for there would be no beauty in that, but in how its ugliness and terror is appropriated, made to work for truth and transformed in the light of love, which is shown victorious in the resurrection. Indeed, already on the cross, the beauty of this costly yet resurrecting love shines out, but in a deeply hidden way. The beauty of the cross is that it tells of a loving God whose creative power is no stranger to our deepest pains and anguish, but present in the very midst of them to heal them. Here, God's own identification with our suffering calls out to our own pain, to all those who have known suffering. But it is not just the suffering and violence of the cross that it is crucial to revealing the hidden beauty of God. This would be the mistake of all those theologies that glorify in the brutality of the cross as a sign of placating God's wrath. Rather, the true beauty of God's love is expressed in the hidden work of Jesus' heart amid suffering, as he weaves together the love of God and the wounded fabric of humanity. Nothing expresses the beauty of God, of who God is, more than this. From within the hard-hearted reality of a human nature that rejects true beauty, Jesus shines at the beauty of love, which works delicately yet decisively to bind all wounds and give us new hearts of flesh, transforming, transforming each person's most personal struggles into a work of beauty that manifests who we are in God. Out of the depths of the heart of God, which are deeper than any darkness, the light of this hidden work of beauty suffuses and softens the cross, just as it hides in our hearts, softening them and opening them for love. Though we at All Saints might mourn our inability to reverence the cross and encounter the beauty of the crucifix on our Eridos, there is perhaps a fittingness to this. Hidden from view, it still whispers to us to seek out the hidden beauty of God's love made manifest in Jesus and in the myriad acts of wonder, devotion and self-giving with which we can paint our lives and world with the beauty of God. All true beauty calls out to us, touches and wounds our hearts, and brings us out of ourselves into the vulnerability of love, into a willingness to give of ourselves to each other in mutual sacrifice, into a personal involvement in building up the common good, where the beauty of each person is nurtured, and the beauty of human community becomes ever more real in which the beauty of creation and human creativity are celebrated. This is to live out the hidden beauty of the way of the cross, to live and die and to live again more fully in love, to live eucharistically in the hidden life of Jesus who pours himself out for us.